The following program was taped in living color and brought to you in mono. Please do not adjust your set. I prefer to call him a biological sperm donor. That ain't what you said the week before. Prepare yourselves for this one. <laughs> Every time I think I'm out, they suck me back in again. It's Talk Soup. Greg Kinnear with you one more time to expand the limited boundaries of your imagination, creating an actual warping of the mind. Checking out highlights of the talk shows here in earthquake-ridden Southern California. I can't handle this anymore, man. <laughs> I don't think I can do this much longer. We're moving the show to New York or Florida. We'll go back to Florida. How about that? Better yet. Coming up, Amelia the Pet Psychic shows off her new tricks. A jealous boyfriend trashes his sweetheart's car. And with this ring, I the pierce ye. Mm -hmm. Stick around for that. First up, though, a big, big, big... You know, it's a big dilemma. That's what it is. According to the E Standards and Practices Manual, I apparently cannot properly introduce this next highlight. I cannot articulate the words that I need to use to set it up properly. You see, it's the Ricky Lake highlight, and it involves a woman who says she's proud to be a... It's a word that begins with B and rhymes with itch, and I can't say that. So, well, here she is. So what happened with uh, your, your ex-boyfriend? Oh, what'd you do to I him? I prefer to call him a biological sperm donor. That's all he was really there for. Um, he, he had, he left, we had dated, wait, we, he had dated, we had dated three and a half years. We had the invitations picked out, everything. I found out I was pregnant and all of a sudden, poof, he's gone. So I said, all right, and we live in a really small town, so I went around and I made up flyers offering money for his private parts. <laughs> I didn't get... It could have been worse. You could have been Lorena Bobbitt. Yeah, see, exactly. Exa I didn't go through with it, but I had the thought. And how many women, women haven't had that thought once? And in spite of the outcome of the trial, let's hope that it doesn't start happening more and more. Later on, a young man in the audience stood up and asked this well-phrased and somewhat provocative question. I want to know if, if everything started going great and you found a man who was handsome and successful like a Tom Cruise or a Greg Kinnear, and someone who was, treat, who was treating you great, like, would you drop it? Would you, would you be going, like, would you drop the attitude? No, or is no, it, no, 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 Even if you were getting everything you no, wanted from the guy? No, because if they meet us and they know this is the way we are, when they yeah. meet us, then yeah, you accept me or you get on out the door. There's a man who knows how to get on Doc Soup. Now, I love when he asks this question. Watch the reaction of the woman sitting on the panel when he mentions my name. Could you please? I want to know if, if everything started going great and you found a man who was handsome and successful like a Tom Cruise or a Greg Kinnear and someone who was, treat, who was treating you great, like, would you drop it? What is that? He's like, <laughs> get off my back, lady, okay? Not exactly Morgan Fairchild yourself. <laughs> Wednesday, Ricky meets identical twins who are now enemies. Things got ugly when they began fighting over the same lovers. It's dump for my twin. Little hit there, but that's okay. Wednesday on Ricky. How's your Wolver? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Has your Rottweiler been? <laughs> Has your Rottweiler been giving you dirty looks ever since you had him fixed? Does your Scottish Terrier seem a bit pensive? What? <laughs> Maybe you should consult a professional pet psychic and find out what your pooch is really thinking. Friday, Mo Gaffney got acquainted with Amelia Kincaid, a woman who can read the minds of dogs. This one is like a little fiery Eartha kit. <laughs> <laughs> to get on the couch, baby. Yeah. I like to get up there and turn around. She jumps up on the couch, turns around and around. Does she do that? Yeah, that's pretty correct. It's pretty right on. Likes to sleep on something that is green and purple. 
Do you get close. that? Yeah. Floral? Bedspread. Bedspread. <clears throat> really? Loves yeah. to chew on woodwork. Loves to. Really? <laughs> Loves to. Loves to chew on cabinets you shouldn't be chewing on. And then here's the real thing. Wants to have puppies so bad. Scared to death. Just one. Oh, she is we just are. a huge. Of her going out yeah. and getting pregnant. Yeah. Walking home. Getting knocked up. You gotta get her fixed. <laughs> Has she had sex before? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get personal. <laughs> she has had sex, but it didn't take. Really? And you were Did very you know lucky. Did you know I that? I wasn't there. Okay. <laughs> That is the highlight of the Mo Show. Incidentally, we have a possible body double between Sable the Wonder Dog and... Ah, oh, the woman who scoffed me on Ricky! It's a big old match. Wednesday on Mo Show, get to know a man who's deathly afraid of birds. He's scared of birds. It's a bizarre phobia day, but don't let that scare you away. Wednesday. You might not think it takes a lot of skill to stand next to an appliance and look pretty because it doesn't. Nevertheless, the folks at The Price is Right are making a big deal out of hunting for a new spokes model. On CBS This Morning, the show's talent scouts conducted this brief but very intensive seminar in appliance fondling. Betty Jane, you're up first. I want you. While, while Roddy, Mr. Roddy here describes the appliance, I want you to fondle as creatively as possible. Ready, okay, begin. Okay, here we go. From Brand Smart USA, we have the energy efficient Give Whirlpool dishwasher with the three Betty position Jane. rack adjuster and three powerful water sprays. Go, show the this water power sprays, clean module, it's not necessary to rinse the dishes before loading. Your choice of door color panel to fit any kitchen decor. Yes. Yeah, and the nice price, Betty Jane, the price. Done. Oh, it's only three hundred ninety-eight. <laughs> oh, uh, okay, Tracy, go for the devil dust. Tracy, it's a dirt devil. Wacomal presents a dirt devil plus made by Royal. This compact and sturdy unit features a nine point five amp motor, go, a thirty-five foot electrical cord, three adjustable height position, the cord, a Tracy. set of onboard Ooh. tools, and a double row of revolving brushes. Yes. Whoa. And the price, Tracy. Tracy's been practicing. Uh, have a guess. 149. 149. Why, she's got it. She got it. 149. She got it. Okay. You're next. Come on. Come on. Iona, yours is the microwave. And Moving on what? to a microwave. Uh, yes. Iona, this is the new compact 600 watt Emerson microwave designed to be one of the most reliable Show it, Iona. Show of its kind. It. Rotating a glass tray ensures. Bundle. Lots of this. Easy to use. Nothing fast. This Wednesday on CBS This Morning, actor Carol O'Connor talks about his series In the Heat of the Night and the quake damage to his popular Los Angeles restaurant out here in, well, Los Angeles. Stick around for more on the scandal that would not go away. Plus, when best friends become lovers, you can bet things are going to get just a little bit out of hand. You were standing over the bed? You broke in somebody else's house to find me. What, the one I don't have to bed. break in to find you. I knew you was there. Well, you can't be friends. What you care who house I'm at? Creating cable TV history right before your eyes. It's talk soup, that's right. The Michael Jackson story continues to make headlines all around this country, I guess around the world, really. Friday, Bertice Berry spoke with Flo Anthony, a journalist and friend of the Jacksons, as well as private investigator Ernie Rizzo. Once again, that's Ernie Rizzo, P.I. Big show on CBS. Steve Bosco program next year. For that. Anyway, the two of them shared these differing views on the child molestation charges that have been leveled against the Michael Jackson camp. Take a look at this highlight. But we're talking about a man that's $68,000 behind in child support, so that could be one reason the mother did not really want him with the, ch the child there all the time because he did owe her that money. And and well, that's not we're true. Also, yes, it is very true. true. He is $68,000. He, he was $68,000. But, okay. well, but I'm just saying, so I think that he said, here's Michael Jackson, I can get films produced, I can do this, I can do that. I mean, oh, fine, he touched your arm. Let's see what that's leading to. But Flo, why Wait isn't Michael Jackson calling an adult woman or even an adult man every day and asking them to travel with him? Why children? Well, it is he not is always why? children. Why? Wait, 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 wait. Why just special children? Two or three a year. Not all of his children. Why all... Do you have any statements from other children? Yeah, four other ones. All cutesy little Beverly Hills boys. 
not inner Have city. Have they come forth with Absolutely. the same kind of allegations? Absolutely. And those will come out. And that's what they're waiting for Michael Jackson to appear on the 18th for. They want to run a few names past him. And I'll guarantee you, he takes the Fifth Amendment and we confront him with it. I guarantee you that. That is very well known private investigator Ernie Rizzo there, perhaps most notably known for his uncanny resemblance to talk suit player number 4B, Tom McNamara, as seen here. We have a, well, we have a body double. Settlement is reportedly near between Jackson and the family of the boy that was allegedly molested. Figures are estimated at, is this right? No. Ten dollars? Ten million dollars. Ten million dollars. Ten million dollars. Can I say that one more time? Wednesday, Bertice meets feuding relatives who are fighting up. Apparently, they're fighting over upcoming weddings. Premarital lengths, Wednesday. Oh, sure, you can always say it with flowers, but if you really want to show that someone special just how much you love them, try taking a crowbar to the windshield of their car, then cut up the upholstery, slash the tires with a six-inch blade, dent the hood, um, realign the... Uh, front wheel suspension, rip off the plates, mangle the windshield wipers, break any glass uh, parts of the car, sugar in the gas tank. That's what this guest from the Richard Bay Show did to impress his cheating girlfriend. Let's find out how she reacted. You used to be really good friends, right? You used to yeah, share a lot of your personal problems. How did it end up that you trashed her car? Well, what would you do if you stood over a bed for 45 minutes while she's in bed with somebody else asleep. What? Richard, Richard, come on. Stop the press, stop the press. We're friends. What do you care? What do you come looking for me for? We're oh, friends. No, wait a second. How did it... You were standing over the bed? They broke in somebody else's house to find me. What, the one I didn't have to bed. break in to find you. I knew you was there. Well, you can't be friends. What you care who house I'm at? We're Is friends. Is that what you said the week before? Hey, that was the same thing with Andre, were you in love with her? Were you in love with her? Yeah, I so told you were, her that. She said the same thing, too. So, so you were jealous of the fact... Yeah. <laughs> All right, what did you do... Andre, what, in your words, what did you do to her car? What did you... Can you tell... Can you remember exactly what you did to he her car? He got a mask he wore, Richard. Look at this. Run the mouth, here, don't come my car with this... <laughs> <laughs> now, tore my car, run the mouth with this on. Andre, what did you do to the car? I tore it up. Uh, how? What did you do? See, lucky I ain't tell her. Ah. What a kind and considerate man. She's lucky I didn't tear her up, says Andre. You see, when you scratch below the surface of his violent, unpredictable, psychotic behavior, there's really a, a very warm man there. Lisa and Andre used to be best friends. Now, as you might have guessed, they're not quite as close as they used to be. On Wednesday's show, Rich is going to counsel some couples who, who are in relationship limbo tricked you there. You didn't think it was anything for a second, but now as you can see, can this relationship be saved? That's what it's called. Richard Gere's latest film, Intersection, is the story of a man who reaches a kind of emotional crossroads, then he has a head-on collision. That's... An... <laughs> There's got to be more to it than that, I'm sure, but that's the short version of the setup. Anyway, that scenario might sound a little gruesome, but today's show host Katie Couric seems to believe Intersection is a woman's movie. Let's find out if Richard Gere thinks of that description as a, a woman's movie. Please. What about the sort of indecision? Do you think that that's fairly typical? Yeah, absolutely. Could you relate to it? Absolutely. I don't, I don't <laughs> I think I didn't get married until I was 42. Right. So there was a lot of indecision in my life. Long relationships, you know, I had several relationships that were over five years. Uh, but, yeah, it was a hard decision for me to make. Do you think this movie, Intersection, is going to be a big commercial success? Or I have no idea. A what do you think? A small movie? I'm not sure. Uh, you know, it's funny. A lot of people seem to think that women will gravitate towards it more than men. I'm not sure why. Um, but, gosh, I have no idea. I Predicting, because, you know better than I, I would. I think it's because no, no one knows. Yeah. No one knows. If people knew, they'd be making... <laughs> Huge hit movies all the time. It doesn't happen that often. But I think people think of it as a woman's movie because it's sensitive. You know? That's sort of that's a sad commentary. Be, it, it is. It's terrible. But uh, because there's no, no shoot 'em up in this and no, no violence in this, you know, we got a great car crash in it <laughs> for the guys. 
Richard Gere talking about his film Intersection. Those car crashes are important. I'm pretty sure that it'll be the car crash in Talk Soup, the motion picture, which will be out sooner than later, that ultimately will sell the film. In fact, do we have clip number 130? No, uh, 206. 206. Wednesday on the Today Show, actor Aiden Quinn talks about his new thriller, Blink, co-starring Madeline Stowe. Mm. Sweaty palms every time I see that. You're in luck. There's more talk soup ahead with a real Tanya Harding. Please stand up. And Jay Leno on the Tonight Show investigate a new form of couch potato relaxation next. Salvador Dali of cable TV shows. We're back. It's Talk Soup. If Tanya Harding goes to trial, one character witness she might use is her cousin, Debbie Addison. One person she definitely will not turn to or call to the stand is her ex-roommate, Gina Dumas. On the Montel Williams show, Gina and Debbie debated over the personality traits of the scandalized skating champ. Tanya is a very competitive person. She doesn't yeah, need... Yeah, overly competitive. Well, More so is... than you and I, yes. Right. But she does not need that. More so than she... the average Joe. No, not That's everybody's going to go out and not do you that. And I. But anybody out here can be an Olympian. You can't just physically represent the United States of America. You have to do it morally, and Tanya Harding cannot do that. Yes, she can. No, she, she is cannot. more American than anybody I know. American? Yes, she is. Do she... all you Americans fake a kidnapping to prove to your father that you didn't go out all night and sleep with a strange man that you only met? She Just was a now, child. a child. She was 16 when she did that. I'm sorry, that is not a child. That's a teenager, and not all typical teenagers do that. I sure didn't. No, that I don't know anything about. I wasn't around when she was a child. I've been well, around that's Tanya not a typical the last American. couple of years, and that girl is proud. Foremost, she is proud to be an American. She's proud to be from the city of Portland. She loves Portland, Oregon. I, Tanya loves herself. She wants to be number Tanya one, does. and that's Tanya all Tanya, Tanya wants herself. to be. Highlight of the Montel Williams show there. Tanya Harding has yet to be charged by authorities if they cannot prove she helped plan the attack on Nancy Kerrigan. She's, she's going to skate on this Wednesday's Montel show. Meet families who just can't seem to get along. It's resolving family feuds Wednesday. Well, it seems like the fitness craze has hit almost every segment of the American public these days. Friday on The Tonight Show. Jay Leno presented workout techniques for those passive individuals known as couch potatoes. Ah, this is a familiar scene at your house. Big doofus sitting around in front of the TV, uh, drinking beer, watching television. Maybe he doesn't exercise enough. Well, now he can sit here and exercise thanks to the real lazy boy recliner. Getting fit has never been easier. Let's show you how it works. Let's see you work that left arm with that beer can. Pull and drink. There you go. Pull and drink. There you go. Building muscles. Okay. Let's see you change channels. Lift and change. Lift and change. There you go. Lift and change. Lift and change. Good, good, good. All right, now, let's try the upper right arm. Use your TV guide. Okay, there's a lot of pull, pull, pull. Hold it, hold it. Check the listing. Pull, pull. And down. And down. Very, very good. Very good. Now, for those of you that want to add a little, uh, little bulk to those biceps and give yourself a reward, try the new uh, donut dumbbell. Let's try that, okay? Lift and bite, and lift and bite, and lift and bite. There you go. A little reward always helps. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. And other exercise equipment Jay previewed included the Run For Your Life treadmill and the Jaw Master. Wednesday night, Jay Leno's guest will be singer Colin Ray. Don't change the channel. We'll be back in a moment with a pair of kinky lovebirds who tie the knot real, real tight. This piercing thing, I just, I'll lead you into this because I want to make sure that you know what I'm well, talking about. Yes. We actually, uh, Shirley, had two weddings. One was an S&M type wedding and the other was a real wedding. You think you've got problems? This is Talk Soup. He used to be an accountant. She used to be a school marm. These days, they're a couple of kinky phone sex moguls. That's what they are. For Nancy and Barry, the walk on the wild side has turned into a full-fledged marathon. As Shirley learned, even their so-called S&M wedding was the scene of some erotic hanky-panky. Now, you had a very interesting wedding. I'm just going to prepare yourselves for this one. <laughs> 
what, just tell us what Barry did to prepare. It was this piercing thing. I just, I'll lead you into this because I want to make sure that you know what I'm well, talking about. Yes. We actually, uh, Shirley, had two weddings. One was an S&M type wedding and the other was a real wedding with a judge. And at the uh, first wedding, the non-legal wedding, uh, instead of the ring going on Barry's finger, it went in his penis. Boy, Barry, Barry, didn't that hurt? Uh, <laughs> oh, it, it, okay. It was, it, well, the, the, the real physical pain was momentary, but it was a wonderful, intimate, and uh, emotional experience. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know where you're coming from, but, uh, like, that, that's got to be more than a little bit intimate pain or, like... Actually, nipple piercings are much more painful and much more sensitive and take longer to heal. Yeah, the man went on to say that the least painful operation to date that he's endured was the brain removal surgery that he had done, I guess, just a couple months ago. Nancy's a grandmother. She became obsessed with eroticism a few years back after having a relationship with a dominatrix transvestite named Bill. On Shirley's show this Wednesday, meet some people who con their <laughs> they con their way onto television is what they did. They're schemers and they're scammers and they're con artists and they're no good Wednesday. We're gonna take a break for the day and be back here tomorrow. I'm Greg Kinnear. Be safe.